A recent online poll has ranked Cleveland the most apathetic city in the nation yet again. When reached for comment, the mayor responded, who cares? You want your weather forecast, Cleveland? There it is. Rain, snow, gray, hot, it's a mess. Why the hell do we live here? Authorities say reports of the recent rise in crime in downtown Cleveland are greatly exaggerated. We here at the... Hey, hey, hey! Hi, I'm Mike Polk. And people often ask me how I managed to love my scrappy hometown so much, despite its many flaws. I tell them it's really quite simple. All you have to do is... Focus on the positive in Cleveland. Why waste your time with negativity? Sure, our weather's pretty bad, the crime rate's not ideal, but there's hardly any traffic, and the real estate's a steal. So focus on the positive in Cleveland. And make it like a place you'd like to be Cause when you focus on the good Then good is what you'll see And Cleveland's looking mighty fine to me The beach is closed due to high bacterial levels The beach is closed Sounds like nobody's drowning today That's a great way of looking at it Keep your fancy cities where you have to try too hard Bar's a little lower here, you see. I'm not especially handsome, and I'm not especially smart. But in this town, they still put me on TV. Focus on the positive in Cleveland. You'll be amazed how lovely life can be. Cause when you focus on the good, then good is what you'll see. And Cleveland's looking mighty fine to me. Cleveland's looking mighty fine to me. Should we do it again? Nah, I'm sure that's fine. We're moving on. Moving on. Everyone and welcome to the Saturday Social. In case we have not yet met, my name is Mike Polk Jr. and I was born and raised right here in Northeast Ohio. I've lived here my entire life and now I'm lucky enough to work right here at WKYC as a reporter of sorts. Now, I'm not the reporter that they send to cover house fires or investigate City Hall or anything. We have great people to do that. My field of reporting leans a bit more in this direction. Happy Cleveland Day, everyone. I shall now return to Connecticut. You howl. We howl. Okay, here it comes. Oh boy. Sorry. So that's my beat. And it's a little weird. But recently, the powers that be here at 3 said to me, Hey Mike, you know that weird stuff you do? We want you to try laying out a bunch of that weird all in a row so that we can try throwing it on late night because the weirdo demographic is really hot right now. And I said, I thought you guys would never ask. Then I said, so when do we hit the studio? And they said, here's the thing. We're in a pandemic still. We're trying to keep everybody safe. So for now, instead of shooting in our enormous, gorgeous studio, can you maybe shoot this in the basement of your own home about eight feet away from your cat's litter box? And I said, well, it's not a very big basement. And they said, we believe in you. And they hung up. So welcome to my basement. Now, we have so much to do and so little time. Uh, but let's begin by addressing an issue that affects us all. And that is, of course, buffet dining. Governor DeWine recently announced that buffets could open across Ohio again. And I have some thoughts on that. And those are the kind of seamless transitions that we plan to deliver regularly. As I said, buffets are now open all over Ohio, but many people may still be hesitant to jump back into that all-you-can-eat game. Buffet dining has always been a bit suspect. The fact that most buffets were equipped with a feature called a sneeze guard prior to the pandemic is a reminder that we were already dancing with the devil. And speaking personally, this cowboy just ain't ready to saddle back up to that golden corral quite yet. And that stinks, because as a lifelong believer in the principle of quantity over quality, I love buffet dining. I love the variety, the lack of commitment, the freedom to take one bite of something, realize you don't like it, and just cast it aside. There's nothing more American. When the buffet shut down last year, I feel like I lost a part of my identity and also roughly 10 to 12 pounds. 
And just to be clear, I'm not saying that buffet dining is not safe right now. Restaurants are taking additional measures to try and make certain of that. But there's a difference between believing something is safe and being comfortable doing it. In fact, I'm currently in the process of reevaluating not just my buffet stance, but several of our beloved pre-pandemic practices that I'll likely be reluctant to resume as we slowly emerge from this icky ordeal. Things like free samples. It's funny how a smiling stranger presenting a tray of tiny complimentary meats and cheeses that countless passersby have spent all day picking over and breathing on used to seem so welcoming, whereas now it seems like more of a mild threat. That's why Free Samples currently rates a five on my skis meter. Group fishbowl drinks. In retrospect, multiple parties sharing one drink was never an especially sanitary concept based on the backwash inevitability alone. And it probably shouldn't have taken a pandemic for that to occur to me. 6.5 on the skis meter. Karaoke. This one hurts, folks. But this is pretty much the perfect storm of factors that our boy the Fouch warned us about. It's maskless, inside, in a crowd, and projecting, likely into a community microphone. So until Papa Bear gets vaxxed up, I'm gonna have to stick with the basement performances. And I need you more tonight. And I need you more than ever. Ball pits. These are essentially just colorful litter boxes for children, and they were already pretty gross back when the worst thing a kid might catch in there was pink eye. Even less inviting now. 8.5. Birthday candles. Perhaps this might be a good opportunity to leave behind some of our less savory traditions. Like say, for example, having one person or several toddlers enthusiastically expectorate all over a communal dessert that your loved ones are about to share. I'd rather bob for apples in a public pool. That's a 10.0 on the skis meter, and I think this one should remain in the past. So now you're like, but Mike, what about tradition? How will we make birthday wishes? First of all, stop whining, it's unattractive. Secondly, you can still make wishes using my new invention, the Wish Buddy. Hey. The Wish Buddy is personalized, it's festive, and most importantly, it's not directly attached to food that your grandma will be eating soon. It's time to move on, folks. Because when we return, I'll be checking in with one of the all-time great Cleveland Browns, Joe Thomas. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Saturday Social, everyone. When the station heads and I were trying to figure out what sort of a show this should be, we had some differing perspectives. They were leaning more towards a traditional talk slash variety show format featuring amusing segments and interviews with interesting people, whereas I wanted it to be more of an American Gladiators meets Supermarket Suite hybrid. In the end, we met in the middle and went with their idea. And I'm actually pretty glad that we did because otherwise, I might not have had the opportunity to catch up with one of everyone's all-time favorite Cleveland Browns, the almost vexingly likable Joe Thomas. Thank you for the time, Mr. Thomas. I know you're not originally from Cleveland, but uh, you are one of us now, whether you like it or not. We've got our Cleveland stank all over you, sir. I'm not sure if I'm important either, but I definitely am stinky, so thank you Good. for that. So the first thing you did when you retired uh, to relax was you uh, lost about 600 pounds and then you got totally jacked, and then you went out and got some more jobs. My biggest fear when I retired from the Browns was, I'm not gonna have a purpose. I'm not gonna have anything to wake up, get me out of bed every day, because that's what I saw from so many of my former teammates. My fear of not finding that purpose and passion led me to finding like six or seven purposes and passions. Okay, rapid fire, get to know you. Uh, what kind of music have you been listening to? I grew up as a child of the 90s and I loved grunge. During this pandemic, I started listening to a little bit more of that. One of the songs that came on was uh, this morning when I was pumping iron, Alice in Chains. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm to snuff the rooster. I was like, yes, more bench yep. press. Yes, another yep. set. It was awesome, man. It just gets you fired up. That's a great tip. This is probably my problem. See, I've been working out to Enya. Just crying on the bench. I've gone to some pretty dark places during the pandemic. I, um, actually ate like an old dusty can of sausage gravy recently. Have you prepared anything particularly gross yourself? I'm a hunter fisher, so I've got a freezer full of fish and game and stuff. I get to the bottom of the freezer and I pull out like the turkey leg that's been frozen for like three years. And I was like, you know what? This is a challenge. Uh -huh. I can make this edible and I don't die. I am the world's greatest chef. Move over Michael Simon, move over Rocco Whalen, but it tasted like I was licking the the top of my grandma's dresser. Like it was yeah. pure dust and old and disgusting. Mm -hmm. Gotta at least touch on Browns. Um, obviously, great year last year, especially by the offensive line, um, particularly rookie Jedrick Wills, who you said was going to be amazing. 
I thought he was the best prospect that I've seen come out of college for an offensive lineman in several years. For the Browns to be able to match their biggest need with the best player in the draft at that position is not something that always happens in the draft. And some people probably don't know that you helped prep Jedrick Wills in the offseason, in a weird offseason. I hope I gave him some perspective on playing the position. I hope I gave him some technique analysis, and I hope I gave him a jump start. Well, thank you very much, 2023 Pro Football Hall of Fame inductee Joe Thomas for your time. Um, thank you for repping the city so well, and thanks for being one of our favorite Clevelanders. That means so much to me. I am happily a Clevelander. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe Thomas, for the conversation, and more importantly, for being a rare bright spot during all of those dismal seasons before the Browns finally became good in preparation for their 2022 Super Bowl championship. Hey, while we're on the subject of famous Clevelanders, do you know this person? If so, congratulations. If not, you've brought shame upon your family. And that's basically how you play everyone's favorite game show, Name That Clevelander. Are you ready to play? Name That Clevelander! I was really hoping I'd be joined in. Oh. Oh, he's all alone. <laughs> kind of left me all alone out there. Can you name a Cleveland celebrity just to get, get warmed up? MGK. MGK, good, good. Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield, he counts. <laughs> all athletes, obviously. Any Cleveland celebrity? Somebody originally from here or currently here? Maybe even just maybe right in front of your eyes. Nope. Okay, all right, let's start it up. You get three correct. You do get a not only our participation certificate, but also a sticker of approval. Let's get lucky. That is Miss Halle Berry. That's Halle Berry! Favorite Halle Berry movie? Mm -hmm. Say it at the same time. One, two, three. Catwoman, Cat obviously. <laughs> now who is this? Mm. That's a good question. I think your dads would know who he was. He's like a football player. No, I don't Back know. when your dads were happy? Bernie Kozar? No? Nope. No. Okay. I'm so sorry, Bern. <laughs> They're children. They don't know. Oh, Who's that? No. Woof, woof, woof. I'm no idea. That's all right. He was a talk show host, probably about 10 to 12 years before you were born. It's our City Hall! That's our City Hall. Oh, everybody loves this guy. Say it all at the same time. <laughs> really? No. You guys don't know Alan Ruck? Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Oh. This is ridiculous, okay? I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go with, I'll go. Here it is, who's that? Slider. Slider, right out of the gate, one for one. Probably our most famous actor that ever came from Cleveland. This one hurts, because you've seen him, and now you're gonna be possibly on local television not recognizing him. I have no him. idea who this mm. is. That's okay, that's Paul Newman. Who is this Cleveland celebrity? Tim, Tim Mesny. Tim Mesny. Oh! <laughs> it's not Tim Mesny. It is Tim oh, Mesny. Yeah. <laughs> Misny, right? Tim Mesny, there you go. <laughs> we are three for three on Tim Mesny. Meanwhile, no one knows who Paul Newman is. That's, we're just gonna skip Harvey Picard. That's <laughs> out the window. Goulardi, nope. This lady, anybody? You got it. It Ka starts with an H. Yes. You're H almost there. Hey, go. Sounds like a laugh. Catherine. Ha. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. Catherine Ha. It's on, and I think she would appreciate that. Give them each a certificate and wow. a sticker of participation. Thank you so much. They did it. I know who you are, Arsenio, and that's all that matters. When we come back, my hard-hitting expose into the landscaping rocks that are terrorizing a Parma shopping plaza, and I'll receive show business advice from Grammy Award-winning rapper Coolio. It's an odd show. Welcome back, everybody. It's time to do some good. Now, as a regional quasi-journalist, I feel a certain amount of responsibility to the community, and that's why when I heard about the mayhem that had overtaken the Coles parking lot in Parma, I felt obliged to step in. So here's a look back at one of my favorite stories of days past, and one that actually had an impact on the good people of Northeast Ohio. Welcome to Parma, Ohio, Cleveland's scrappy, southwestern neighbor, and to many, an idyllic suburban paradise. But lately, something sinister has been terrorizing its citizens. And that something is a rock. This rock. Located just inside the Coles parking lot off Ridge Road, it has been mercilessly wrecking cars and lives for months now. 
On the Parma Neighborhood Watch community Facebook page, hundreds of concerned citizens have been actively recounting their experiences with the malevolent boulder and passionately debating what's to be done about it. Perhaps it's good that the rocks are in that spot. Otherwise, there would be a different sort of accident. Saw that on my way to PetSmart, LOL. How do people get the car on the rocks? I have drove by this, and yes, it is awkward, but definitely noticeable. At the same time, can they just remove it already? It's a rock. Couple of rocks, actually. Why are these rocks even necessary? And why are they trying to destroy our cars? I mean, you can see what the problem is here. Right here is the curve where people have to turn in. Um, and then here are these rocks. Maybe if it's dark, maybe you're texting, maybe you've been to that TGI Fridays for a little bit, maybe the Ruby Tuesdays happy hour. You pull in here. I guess I could see how this would happen. As you can see, there's debris strewn all about, wreckage from terrors past. I'm not a geologist, but it does appear to be some sort of a sedimentary rock. Not sure exactly what that means, but particularly sharp. At least, according to the Facebook page, at least eight people have gotten their car stuck on this rock. But why are they getting their car stuck? I mean, look at the radius of this curve. Are you gonna tell me that's too extreme that the competent driver cannot navigate around that? I mean, I, when you put it like that, I guess it, it all seems kind of silly. You tell us about your experience. You actually did run into the rock. I, I have a brand new car. Can you see the side of it? And when I was, it was raining, and when I was turning and snowing, and you couldn't see all the rocks. So what's to be done about this boulder of doom? It looks like, as usual, in order to prevent tragedy, I'm going to have to take action. Is it a perfect solution? No, but it'll have to do for now. This is Mike Polk keeping Parma safe. And safer it became. We're pleased to report that those treacherous rocks were removed less than six months after this story aired. And that's just the power of lightweight journalism, people. You're welcome. I believe I've made it clear by now that I do take my civic duties seriously. And that's why, as an unapologetic cat daddy, I often yield my precious spotlight in order to introduce you to some very special feline friends of mine who are in the market for a new forever home. It's a segment we call Meet Those Kitties. The kitty I'd like you to meet today is my new friend, Creature, one of the many adorable adoptables available at one-of-a-kind pet rescue in beautiful Akron. Creature is a lovely domestic short hair who's frankly a little bashful and was not quick to warm to me when I stopped in for a visit. Okay, so we're going in to befriend Creature. Here we go. Okay, Creature's already giving me the stink eye. I didn't want it to be like this. I'm just coming in for just a quick little pet. No, okay, yep. yep. Okay, all right. Um, I just want to pet you. Okay, I'm freaking the cat out. I'm freaking her out. Okay, Hot. Okay. she took the glove. That's yours, you keep that. I assume she was too overwhelmed by my star power for us to form a real connection, but clinic volunteers say the creature's just a bit of an introvert who's probably been through some stuff, but that once she knows you, she becomes quite affectionate and would make an excellent companion. Maybe for you. All honored guests like Creature at One of a Kind Rescue have been spayed or neutered, microchipped and vaccinated, and are waiting to meet you in person or at oneofakindpets.com. And that's Meet Those Kitties. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. I thought it might be fun to share something kind of personal with you at this point. My Aunt Angelina is a wonderful person who only wants the best for me, and that's why when I received this Facebook message from her, I was not surprised. Michael, heard about your new TV show, and I thought it might be helpful for you to get some advice from real celebrities about how to entertain people. But I know that you are not successful enough to personally know any, better way of saying that, so I decided to find some stars on the internet site Cameo. Unfortunately, I am on a fixed income, and there were only two celebrities that were in my budget range. But I also decided to throw in Santa Claus, because I saw that he was only $10. So what the hey? Hugs and kisses, Aunt Angelina. Very sweet of her. So take a look. Here is some showbiz advice for me from celebrities that my aunt could afford. Hi, this is Gilbert Gottfried. I hope you can hear the sound of my voice. Yo, what's up? This is Coolio with the flow. Hello, it's me, Santa. This is for Michael. And this message is for Mr. Michael Polk. Now, Michael, I've got it straight from Angelina. 
you're starting your own talk show. I can tell right now, it's gonna be a massive failure. <laughs> uh, the three keys to success are number one, uh, don't take advice from me. First and foremost, be confident. You just need to be yourself, and that's how you don't get scared. Even if you're not that confident, don't let anybody know. I mean, you'd be better off uh, in a job cleaning the grill at McDonald's. Show up and show out. All right, I'm kidding. They never clean the grill at McDonald's. <laughs> don't ever, ever wear the same thing twice. Now, Michael, I want to give you a great big hug. A virtual hug. <laughs> anyway, Michael, best of luck to you. Share the love, Michael. Shaka Zulu, man. And Shaka Zulu to you as well, Coolio. Wise counsel there from some true Hollywood luminaries. So thanks to them and my Aunt Angelina. Now, before we leave you tonight, I wanted to share one last thing. It's a little ditty I wrote about love in the time of pandemic. This past year has certainly been challenging for romance, not just for people trying to find that special someone, but also for those who already had. Take a look. Quarantine lover, you're the only one for me. We're stuck together whether or not we should be. It's quite apparent we're not the perfect pair But dating others has to wait cause it's not safe out there Quarantine lover, you're my best pandemic pal My heart is yours till we get the vaccine Call us COVID dependent and we won't disagree My quarantine lover and me Quarantine lover, you're my mandatory mate We've got our issues, but they're gonna have to wait It's not all roses, but I'm yours and you are mine My favorite thing about you is we've kissed and I'm still fine Quarantine lover, someday we'll both be immune To this illness that is our monogamy Till then we're quarantine lovers doesn't love a happy ending. Well, that's our show. Thank you for quarantining with me for the past half hour, and thanks to my special guests, Joe Thomas, Gilbert Gottfried, Coolio, and Santa Claus. I'm Mike Polk Jr., and this has been your Saturday Social. Stick around. SNL's coming on now.